Today, I want us to look on uh, this ICS in practice. But because previously we had covered two main areas, I hope you still remember that we covered the purchases and creditors. Purchases and creditors. We also did what? Sales and debtors. This was in lesson two. Today we are introducing wages and salaries. Wages and salaries. And we are going to work out on fixed assets. Fixed assets. We are going to be ending this lesson with another lesson. This one is going to be our lesson three. But we'll have a lesson four here which is going to cover evaluation of ICS, evaluation of ICS, and limitations of ICS. Limitations of ICS. So for now, we look on these two here as a continuation of those particular areas there, wages and salaries. If I talk about wages and salaries, perhaps just like the way we did on the issues relating to purchase and creators, we started with something called the cycle. The cycle, we said, is a stream of activities involved in a particular environment. The cycle in this case is called the payroll cycle. The question is that we want to ask ourselves, if you are making payments on salaries and wages, what main activities are supposed to be involved? One, I believe it is good we do the recruitment. The recruitment of what? Of staff. Recruitment of company staff. Recruitment is followed by an activity known as training. And training is followed by another activity which we refer to it as what? We say, we can, we can send the, the uh, we, we allocate or we assign the, the, the staff to the uh, respective areas of operation. Assignment. Assignment. We assign you to the area that we want you to go. Once we assign you the area that you're supposed to go, we collect the work, the details of work done. Work done. And once we collect the work done, how much work have you done, we can now generate something called the payroll. We prepare payroll. A payroll is going to help us to determine how much are we supposed to pay you. And then we are going to do the, what? The payment of the salaries and wages. From there, we will do accounting. And that is going to be ending that particular cycle. So we have a cycle starting with recruitment or employment of staff. We have assignment. We assign you where you are supposed to be working according to your competency. Then we, comp we, we have a summary or we collect or we accumulate the work done. We prepare the payroll. At the end of the day, we come up with a what? The payment schedule. And then we do the payment and account for that particular payment as salaries and wages. In an, in an earlier lesson, we talked about objectives. And we said there is no controls that have no co control objectives. The control objectives on salaries and wages, salaries and wages, we can design them from these activities here. And I'm going to try. One of the objectives whenever we're introducing the salaries and wages control is to ensure that the people who have been employed in that particular company are genuine people, authentic people, and they're not ghost workers. So we want to eliminate the case of ghost workers. So the objective is to ensure that only genuine employees appears on the what? Are on the payroll. Or you can say to eliminate cases of ghost workers. To eliminate cases of ghost workers. That forms part of the main objective. We want to eliminate ghost workers. That is on the names. 
or maybe the employees. But we also want to make sure that if you are an employee, you are paid for the work done. You cannot be paid for anything that you have not done. So we say to ensure that employees are paid for work done. Most companies, they measure work done using what? Hours. Others, they measure work done using what? Pieces produced. What we refer to as piece rate. In number three here, we can introduce still one or more objective to ensure that if you are an employee and your rate is 500 per hour, you are getting exactly that according to the proportion of the hours worked. So we say to ensure to ensure that correct employees correct employees are paid using correct using actual rates or correct rates actual rates if you are an employee you are given the rate that is proportioned to you and that becomes another objective to ensure that the rate is paid to you is actually what is supposed to be meant for you so i have three objectives and i'm going to introduce two more one is based on the calculation so we say to ensure i'm going to delete that part to ensure that the payments made have been properly calculated salaries and wages control objective number four <clears throat> to ensure that the payroll you can say calculation or computation computation is correct if you don't want to use the word correct you can use the word accurate that is what you want to achieve that that computation that has been done is what is accurate we can also come here and uh, introduce one more we say because now we are paying the employee we need also to pay the government and the government is paid certain reductions to ensure that statutory deductions have been made statutory deductions have been made and remitted and remitted to the necessary authority authority so if you are supposed to be paying payee or you're supposed to be paying something like NHIF or NSSF, that money has been made by the company and the company is going to pay them. We want to avoid such kind of a scenario. We can also come up with one more based on the accounting. And we can say, because we are going to do the accounting of that particular payroll to ensure, to ensure that all salaries and wages have been accounted for, Accurately and promptly. Salaries and wages have been accounted for. Accurately and completely. And completely. And that becomes another particular part of what? Objective. This one is about accounting. This one is about statutory deductions. This one is about computation. That one is about the rate, the rate that we used to pay. This one is about the what? The hours worked or work done. And this one is about the employee, whether we are dealing with genuine employees or we are dealing with ghost employees. So those are the objectives. Remember, the question here is not about objectives. It's about the controls that we are supposed to put in place in what? In salaries and wages. So having covered the objectives, we need to introduce what we refer to as the controls themselves so the issue here is the control procedure that was control objective control objective is followed by control procedure the control procedure will relate to the main activities in salaries and wages what are the main activities in salaries and wages we have the recruitment of staff we have the assignment of staff we have the work done we have the payroll preparation we have the payment we have the accounting all that is going to be forming part of the controls in the payroll. 
We're also going to be looking on issues relating to wages and issues relating to uncollected wages. Those are the control that we are supposed to design here. So this part here, I'm introducing controls procedure on the payroll. Control procedures on salaries and wages on the payroll. Salaries and wages. This is how it's going to work. We start with recruitment, say, all appointments, appointments and employments and recruitments in a company should be authorized and approved by a senior official, by a senior official. So we are saying, do not employ any person in this company without proper authority. Once we employ any person in a company, we need to maintain a record of that person. Because in case the auditor comes and starts investigating that person, where are we going to start? So we need to do what? To maintain a record. So we say, all employees details should be recorded recorded in a personnel file maintained by a personnel department by personnel department that becomes another objective. I can put another objective here. This time is about whatever we are going to be doing the payment. Remember, we are going to make the payment, but we want to make sure that the payment is, is based on what we had agreed. So we say, all rates of pay, rates of pay, comma, changes in the payroll, must be approved or authorized approved by a senior official so we don't want any person to harm up with his own rates or we don't want maybe a person to be removed from the payroll without proper procedure and that's why we are saying that that particular should be done by a senior official there is what we call employees who are paid based on the hours worked and we usually say if you are being paid on the hours worked, you should be paid using the correct accurate hours. And so we say all hours worked should be recorded by use of, by use of, you know that particular card that is used in factories? We call them clock cards, use of clock cards. But clock cards nowadays are being replaced by swipe cards. So you say electronic swipe cards. Electronic swipe cards. We want to maintain correct hours worked by an employee. And this one should be supervised and acknowledged. This should be supervised and acknowledged acknowledged by a senior official now we have controlled the hours worked and then we should have what we refer to as peace rate all records of peace work should be kept in safe custody. So don't allow, if we are paying using peace rate, someone to have maybe a record of that particular peace rate because it's going to be maybe adding or inflating that particular rate. And again, there should be procedure. There should be procedure for reconciling. 
Peace Records. Peace Records with production records. Production records. And that becomes another particular activity that we need to go ahead and introduce. Remember, this one we are talking about the piece written work done. We can also introduce now the payroll. We can say payroll preparation should be done by an independent official. Should be done by an independent person. There. That is, the person who is doing the payroll preparation should be independent from others. And then we should have someone who is going to be checking the payroll for accuracy and maybe correctness. So, there should be a responsible official checking the payroll, payroll for accuracy. That becomes another control on the payroll. Action. Then when we have a responsible official checking the payroll for accuracy, mostly he's doing the calculation to see whether all the figures were computed correctly. Something else we need to introduce on this particular payroll is that all the payments should be done in the presence of a foreman. Payment of salaries and wages must be done in the presence of a foreman. Usually we say, but not by the foreman. So the foreman should not pay but the foreman should tell us who and who worked. Must be done in the presence of the foreman or any person capable of identifying employees. Capable of identifying employees. So if you go mostly in factories, we have so many employees. Or if you go in a construction company, the only person who can be able to explain about those particular persons is the foreman. But the foreman should not be allowed to pay, but he can be able to be there to supervise the way payment is being done, as well as maybe to tell us maybe who was supposed to be paid and who has not been paid. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners. Visit our shop along Tomboya Street, Pioneer House, 3rd floor, opposite fire station.